Okay. I hope I can remember what to even make the name of this title. You know, I I'm gonna first off before I before I even talk in this video, I've always known what baptism, water baptism was good for. You know, I'm listening to the Phil Robertson because I like him. And, uh, you know, I don't know what all he believes. And I don't think that that is what matters. Uh, but he was talking about baptism, that he went to a prison. And he talked to these people that were on death row. And I, I love the message. I'm going to get back to listening to it. Well, I really don't know if I've got the time tonight. But he said that... Um, that these people that were on death row at this prison asked to be let out to be baptized at the local lake. This was like a couple of weeks ago, this video that he made. That he made. And um, I know what water baptism does. It makes you feel like a new person. Just like if you haven't taken a shower in a couple of days and you get under the water, it makes you feel like a new person. And um, when you, ha uh, if you asked me, Jeff, what does it take to be saved? I could not personally tell you because I. I'm not going to tell you what other people out here tell other people. I know there's nowhere in the Bible, and I don't even have proof by this, but I know there's nowhere in the Bible that it says that I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior. You know, I heard that message when I was in Nevada back about a month back. I was listening to a pastor on the radio. Everything that this pastor said was true. Everything that this pastor said was true. But when he said that, bells went off. And I've heard other people say the same thing. You know, if I told someone that is what their problem is, is they're separated from God because of sin, that I would tell someone. But the main problem in society today is that they add things to it. And they try to pick and choose things that they think this is that's important when the whole Bible is important. You know, I understand why people out here say that they believe that if you pray this prayer, that you'll be saved. But if there's no change in your life, then you're not going to be saved. So if there's no change in your life, that's going to be, that's going to make you saved. Then how could you go back to your life the way you were before you came to Christ and be saved? It's not possible, people. It's not at all. But I could not tell you if you said, Jeff, what would it take to be saved? My story would be hours long. Some of y'all out here may have a couple of things you would tell someone. But I'm going to try to touch on every subject that I know of. Some people would say believe and have faith. And I would say that that's not all. That's not all at all. Um...
I mean, there's no doubt in my mind, I've never been baptized by water. I got baptized by the Holy Spirit when I was driving through New Mexico one day, or actually working in New Mexico. I wasn't driving through, I was working in New Mexico. And believe me, people, for a couple of months, even until I started driving over the road, I felt like a whole new person. What happened in my life that that fell apart? Going back to sin. Not stopping the things that I was doing. But why does it not bother other people? That they're sinning and they think that they're right with God. There is something wrong. There is something wrong with Christianity right now. There is something majorly wrong with Christianity. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a savior because we are all in need of Jesus Christ. We were all in need of receiving the Holy Spirit and being born again. Every living human being is in need of that. Absolutely no doubt. That's, all, that's what our whole duty is, is to receive the Holy Spirit and one day be with God forever and ever. But the way Christianity is right now, it is so horrible. The message is so horrible. There's not, a, there's not a whole bunch of scriptures that you can just single out. It is the whole word of God that people are supposed to take into account. I can't tell you just to believe and have faith when the Bible says to repent. Even in the old, even in the, in the book of Revelation, it says that if you don't repent, you'll, t your lampstand will be taken away. You can likewise perish what Jesus Christ, word in the flesh, came down here and sit here and said, and most Christians today are against the word repentance because they believe that if I sit here and told you that you had to repent, that's what Jesus Christ said. then how could you be saved? You're supposed to repent and turn to God. But I still believe repent is a threefold thing. I believe it's, it's changing your whole aspect on your life and turning from sin and turning to God. Even though it says repent and turn, well, repenting, if you're turning, then you're turning to God also. That's what you're doing. But it's evident that most people do not have the Holy Spirit because of the things that they say out here and the things that they do. You'll know them by their fruit. It's quite relevant that the majority of the church is not right with God. Now, I, my number one, I cannot believe it, five years, people, five years that I've been a watchman, that I've made videos, I've said things, I've done this and I've done that, and I have still yet to read the Bible. Without reading the Bible, I am never going to have the armor of God, and that's why I deserve everything that I witness every day. You think... I don't go through hell every day when there are so many Christians out here that are living for God and that do everything that God asks of them and don't suffer nothing at all. I'm not going to say they won't suffer from ailment. We're all, we, we weren't guaranteed anything to be perfect. We were granted life, air, and death. I said that a few years ago, I said that. But there are a lot of Christians out here 
that aren't suffering from a lot of things. They're doing what God asks. They've got the armor of God. They don't have to worry about, uh, I mean, the saddest thing about Christianity today is people preaching what their denomination preaches. Who cares about what the church preaches out here? It's about what the word of God says. When I see people sit here and say, this is what I believe, it never amounted to what you or I believe. It's only about what the word of God says. But when you do get baptized by water and your intentions are to start living for the Lord, your whole life changes. The Holy Spirit enters you. I mean, you still have to repent. I don't care what anybody says. Repenting, as a matter of fact, I, I somebody just minute, mentioned a minute ago on that Robinson video where somebody was talking about repentance and was talking about baptism. It's not baptism that gets everything rolling. Until you repent, you ain't got nothing rolling your way. You going toward God? Let me tell you this right now. What's wrong with Christianity and the church today is they're not doing what God asked. And if you don't do what God asked, then you're going to have the same problem I'm having. The only thing is, I know I have a problem. A lot of y'all don't. You think you don't have a problem. You think you don't have a problem. You think you're saved. Sounds like pride to me. That isn't humbleness. Well, if you can sit here and say you know you're saved, you better be following the entire word of God because that's the only way I know you're saved. I mean, when I hear people say nanoseconds after you say you believe in God and that you have faith that you're saved, nah, 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 that's not the way it works. Because you have not even done anything of what the Bible says. You've done two things out of the whole entire Word of God. I mean, out of like almost 2,000 pages of the Word of God, you've done two things. You haven't even showed obedience enough. I know believe, like I said, today... What people believe, believe means it's not the same as what people in the past have believed. Just like a lot of people will say it's always been once saved. People have been preaching once saved for years. No, they have not. If they have been preaching once saved for years, then why did they go home in the 1800s instead of stopping by the, the canteen on the way home from church? I mean, I'm sure there were some hypocrites out there that did stuff like that. But I know, I can tell you this right now, the majority of churchgoers didn't go and mingle with the sinners everywhere like they do today. Bing, 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 bing. Now you want to know why Christ told us not to hang around with sinners? Because I know what you'll do when you hang around with the sinner. You'll start doing what they're doing. If you have quit, if you have quit doing these things, you'll go right back to it. You will have not, you will have not been a drug addict for years, an alcoholic for years, a cigarette smoker for years, a fornicator for years, an adulterer for years, adulterer, homosexual. Next thing you know, you start hanging around the sinners, you do the drugs, you do the drinking, your demons will come out, and next thing you know, you're full force, straight up a sinner, falling away, backslidden, apostate. Now you tell me how you say you can do the things of the world because you're a friend of the world. You're doing things of the world. Somebody says, hey, we got a party this weekend. Oh, well, sure. Sounds like you're crucifying the flesh there, doesn't it? I don't think so. Sounds like to me, you're not trying to fight the temptation. And that's where the majority of Christianity is today. They're the, the lukewarm... Um, 
But believe me, like I said, I got my problems, people. If you think I'm only pointing fingers at other people, oh my goodness, I don't... I, you don't even know how my last week's been. You don't know how my last two weeks have been. You don't know how my last three weeks have been. My last month. My last two months. My last year. Last two years. Before that, it was a lot better. It was a lot better. And I know exactly what I've done to God that this has all fallen apart on me. You know, God still does things for me every day trying to keep me afloat. Because he didn't just make me a watchman, but I'm not going to talk about the other thing. You know, I'm not going to sit here and boast in pride. But more, I, I am telling you right now, you, the majority of the church have sold yourself to what man has said what man has taken from the word of God and it never had to be true at all. Baptists believe in Bapti the Baptist faith. Catholics believe in the Catholic faith. The Nazarene believe in the Nazarene faith. You believe in what man is out here, what they have taken from the word of God. And you know what? How many churches out here have provenly gone against the word of God and they're nothing more than a cult and there are and they've got thousands and thousands maybe millions of followers all around the world headed straight to hell right now and you think your denomination is so much better than them And all I, all I hear is this free gift, this free gift that they want to preach unconditional salvation. And no, it is conditional. It is conditional. I can promise you it's conditional salvation. Your free gift that you boast so much about is not unconditional salvation. Believe what you want to believe. I'm just telling you the truth. If you know, if, if you want to pick and choose scriptures in the Bible, just like that J.D. Ferrang or whatever his name said today, he said that the majority of churches out here today only preach like 30% of the Bible. If I recall, that's what his, I got a video on a prophecy channel today on my soap phone and he sat there and said, that the majority of the church does not even preach the whole Bible. As a matter of fact, when the majority of the churches out here all these years have preached against sin and they don't preach against sin today, boom. There you go. The thing that the thing that that was the thing that got us in the darkness in the first place. We had to come out of the darkness into the light. What were we born into? Sin. What What? What do you think we were at the time? Evil in the wound yet at youth. Unrighteous. Sin is unrighteousness. So if you think, isn't it weird? Unrighteousness deserved God's wrath, like the Bible says. But people say that we're not held accountable for their sins anymore. Our sins. That's a lie. God can overlook some sins and some sins he cannot. And when you get to practicing and living in sin, you got a problem. And I got a problem. I'm telling you right now, I have got a problem. And where, where, is, my, where is my relief? <laughs> right there, the armor of God. The something that, I, that Satan fights me all the time. Anytime I think about reading the Bible... Satan fights me every time. But I do know the truth. And I'm telling you this right now, you cannot go back to the same life you were living before. What was the whole... Like I said, it's not baptism of water that saves a person. It's receiving the Holy Spirit and being a born again is what saves a person. Jesus Christ did not say you had to have him. 
It's the Holy Spirit that you have to have. And when you have the Holy Spirit, you have him. And if you go back to living a life of sin, being of the darkness, being a bad fruit, be living for the flesh, you will lose the Holy Spirit. The only time you're going to have the Holy Spirit is when you're living for God. And you think, you think I'm lying to you. You think I'm lying. And I'm not. Again. I was even thinking about the other day, thinking about taking a lie detector test again and having someone ask me a whole list of questions that I wrote up. But I remember last time I thought that back about, let me see, I took a year, I've been working for about four months now, I took a year off. So about, roughly about three years ago, I thought one night when I was driving down the road, I'll just go take a lie detector test to prove to people that God told me these things. And then all of a sudden, it was either, it, I, I ran over a raccoon. I mean, I'm talking instantaneous. As soon as I thought that I ran across a ra ran over a raccoon, and I was like, maybe that was a sign. Two things happened after me saying these things when I was in the truck. I had a blowout. And I had a, uh, I had a blowout and I had, and I ran over a raccoon and, um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think it's apparent. I, 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 let me tell you this, the church is so far from the truth, people. I am telling you this right now. One of the very first things Jesus prophesied, saying that w when they asked him, "What what is your what is our your knowing of your return?" One of the very first things Jesus Christ said never happened. The one you guys think happened never was the one he said. And there is living proof right there in Israel. Right there in Israel, living proof, living proof before Jesus and since Jesus went to be back at the right hand side of the Father. Maybe you guys can do the math. You want to know why Jesus Christ hasn't been back? It's all right there. It's all right there. So, uh, oh, I'm telling you this right now, there's living proof. There's proof right there in God's word. Right there in God's word, and people have overlooked it. The church has has said yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. It has not. So, uh, I'm telling you, there's 100% proof behind this. I know exactly why Jesus Christ has not returned. And I know exactly why God pours his wrath. The day I asked him, why the, why is a meteor going to hit the earth? Why is a meteor going to hit the earth? God, why would you let a meteor hit the earth? Bam, told me. Right there in the Bible. Never heard of it in my entire life. Right there in God's word. And I'm telling you this right now. That day comes around. If you are in the wrong place. If I am in the wrong place. It's over. You lost your chance for salvation. It's over. Because you'll, that God told me two thirds of the population is going to perish when that meteor comes through that sky and hits the ocean and there are tsunamis that hit every coastline around the world. Two thirds of the population perishes while you're breathing, while we're breathing. We better find God and we better have the Holy Spirit and we better have Christ when this happens. And I'm telling you this right now, the rapture is just before it. You guys want to know when the rapture is? If you ever know when the meteors come and the rapture is just before it. I'm telling you, it's right before it. Not before, not anytime soon. Just because it says... And, and, I, and I love that I finally found somebody again that talked about the Antichrist being revealed in the falling away before the rapture. Somebody brought it up again. Finally, finally, after, after a couple of years that people have said, oh, it's imminent. Oh, it could happen any moment. No, it couldn't happen any moment. One of the very first scriptures that people refer to the rapture, people forgot about. 
Oh, it could happen any moment. Oh, no, it can't happen at any moment. The Antichrist has to be revealed and the falling away has to happen. Actually, the falling away, then the Antichrist, if I recall. But guess what? It doesn't have to happen 10 seconds later. It doesn't have to happen six months later. It doesn't have to happen for a whole year later. The Antichrist could be revealed tomorrow. And, he, and I'm telling you this right now. Where's the pre-trib? Crap is falling around, uh, falling apart all around us. Where's that pre-trib rapture? Only way it's a pre-trib rapture is at this event is at the beginning of the tribulations. If we're not in the tribulations, the event that God told me, if it's at the beginning of the tribulations, then it's a goner. Then it's a it's a pre it's a it's a, it's at the beginning of the tribulations. If not, it's pre, mid trib, and I believe it's mid trib. I sure do. I still do, and I will always. I mean, until it happens, until it happens, I know right now. It, if you're right with God, God's going to point fingers out. But most people are not willing to do anything whatsoever. Most people are not even willing to leave their house. Most people are not even willing to buy food. Most people are not even willing to take into account what the Word of God says about the famines and all these things that would be happening in the end days. Right there in front of your face, if you Google mass animal deaths, you will see what this life is going to be like. You know, there are people out here that think that things could happen tomorrow. They think, oh, well, there'll be deer everywhere. Are you so sure about that? You sure there'll be deer everywhere? You think there'll be a rabbit everywhere? You think you'll be lucky to find a cockroach? Roach? You think you're gonna be you think you're gonna be lucky to find anything just laying around to grab to eat? Good luck. Good luck. But you got God, and I know right now he'll have your back. But you don't got God, he ain't gonna have you ain't he ain't gonna have your back, and I know it. Same with me. Same with me. I know he's not. And 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 most Christians right now are blindly living in sin, practicing sin. They're lawless. It's not the King James. I think it's the NIV or the ESB says that in that Jesus denies people of lawlessness. It doesn't say uh, workers of iniquity. I really do think God was behind putting these certain names that is the same, the same. It's the same meaning. Unrighteous and wicked, same meaning, synonyms of each other. Uh, I mean, the synonyms, not necessarily same meaning, but a derivative, basically the same thing. And evil, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, the majority of church is evil in God's eyes right now, wicked. I'm telling you this right now, you, you can boast your Baptist church, you can boast your Catholic church, you can boast all these churches, and guess what? You'll find out in the end. All you are is full of pride. That's what's wrong with the majority of Christians today. A pride. They're so caught up in, Oh, my Baptist, my Catholic, my Nazarene, my, 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 my. We're the ones preaching the truth. We're the ones preaching the truth. I mean, we're the ones with all-knowing truth. Sounds like pride to me. Sure does. Sure does. The thing that God hates, and you think that God was just going to let you guys be so full of pride? Huh? One of the main things God hates over anything is pride. And look at all the Christians full of pride. Literally. I would rather just be lucky to hope to find a church out here that's Holy Spirit filled and has a Holy Spirit message coming from a pastor instead of a lie. Instead, the majority are lying out here to you. And people are just loving it up. Ooh, tickle, 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 I think there's somebody outside. They probably think I'm a nut. Uh, 
uh, yeah, I'm telling you, this world is gone. Christianity is gone. Most people, their message is garbage. Most Christians' messages, pastors' messages is complete garbage. The, the twisting of God's word to the, to the extent of where the message is almost worthless. If you went to a church today, the majority of the message is absolutely worthless. The best thing a person could possibly do is say, here's the Bible. These people are real. Read it for yourself. You'll get better understanding than listening to the church and me. I mean, that's what the best thing I could possibly do. If somebody asked me, what does it take to be saved? I'd put the best thing for me to do so I don't leave something out or don't deceive or say something wrong would be, here's the Bible. Here's the Bible. God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. These other characters, people in the Bible, read the Bible, get understanding, fear God, and he'll give you understanding. What you need to know, you can get it for yourself. All these years, the people got it from the church. Now everybody's overnight theologian certificate, a Cracker Jack box. That's where we're at today. Everybody's a damn know-it-all. Excuse me. Had to get it out that way. Everybody is a darn know-it-all. I'm telling you. Everybody is a know-it-all. I got the answer. What'd you say? I got the answer. I got the answer. I'm all-knowing. I think I know God. I think I figured God out. That's how everybody is today. And they still don't know God. Still don't know God. Claim to know God. They knew God. They'd remember that he was the same before, in, middle, end, whatever. You guys know what the scripture says. And it seems like the majority of church is saying that God changed. They'll profess he's the same God because it's right there in the Bible. But the message is totally changed totally changed sounds like a bunch of gossip bunch of lying going on I'm telling you I'd be scared to tell 